Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Uh, a couple months back, I did a video with Cura46, uh, I believe it was, on how to create a temperature tower. Um, that video has worked out well up until the release of Cura48. So when 4.8 came out, there were a lot of people um, in the community who were reaching out because they were having issues where it wasn't changing the temperature at the height like it was supposed to. Uh, after digging into this a bit more and uh, working with one of our subscribers here, uh, it turns out that uh, there might be an issue. I'm not sure if it's related to a specific firmware version or board. Um, I think with most of the cases that have been reported to me, um, they've been using the 32-bit uh, Creality board, the one that's been shipping with the Endure 3 V2 and some of the Endure Pros now. Um, but I can't say conclusively that that's the only trigger. It could be a version of firmware they're using there or whatever the case may be uh, but there is a workaround that I'll show you here in a couple minutes we got to switch from using the height to using layers it's a little bit more complex there's a couple more things you have to keep in mind uh, but overall it's not difficult uh, if you don't have this issue great I mean with my SKR mini I don't have the issue at all um, I haven't actually tried it on the 8-bit Creality boards because I don't currently have one right now that I can test with 4.8. But if any of you guys do and you can run that test uh, and leave a comment below, uh, that would really help everybody out. Alright, so before we go and get started, a couple of things. First, if you haven't already, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. Next, I'm going to try to start doing some consolidated videos that are under 60 seconds long and then uh, post those uh, later in the week. So I typically try to post a video every Tuesday. I'll be posting these shorter videos on like a Friday. Uh, the purpose of them being uh, to try out YouTube's new algorithm with the shorts and also try to grow the channel some more. And I think that some people uh, prefer the information to be more compacted. Uh, so if you're that type of person, those might be for you. Uh, if you're the type of person who's liked the detail and the extra time that I put into these longer videos, um, don't worry, I'm still going to be doing that as well. But if you have any questions, comments, or uh, would like me to create any videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. All right, so here I've got a temperature tower that I printed uh, using layers instead of height. Uh, it changed temperature as expected with no issues, so that's what I'm going to walk you through. Uh, one note that I wanted to point out is uh, I was playing around with the Cure before and I had um, supports in there and I forgot to take them out. Uh, so don't do that. Make sure that when you're printing this, you do not print it with supports. Um, I was fine with letting it keep going because the purpose of the print was to make sure that it was changing temperatures correctly, uh, not to actually get a good temperature tower uh, because I have multiple for this filament type that I'm using, which is the Hatchbox. Uh, I'll link to it in the description below. All right, so let's go ahead and jump to the computer and get started. All right, now that we're here at the computer, um, I have up the file that we're going to use for the test. It's just the standard heat tower ranging from 240 to 190. If you're looking for more information on why I chose this one or want to look at some of the more complex ones, uh, I'll link to the video I did on that in the description below. But this one meets my needs probably 90% of the time. All right, so we'll just go ahead and download this. We want the one with the bridge. So this has the bridge here, as you can see. Uh, this one does not. Um, to me, this one doesn't provide much value. Um, the, adding the bridge really does help. So you want to download this one. And then once you have that downloaded, you want to go and open up Cura. Here I've got Cura 4.8, as you can see. And I already dragged the temperature tower in here. All right, really quick before we start working in Cura. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to point out is this starts at 240 degrees for the base, so we want to make sure that we're setting that there. Uh, no supports and 10% infill, and that this is a step every 5 millimeters, so we want to make sure that we're accounting for that. Alright, so let's go to minimize this and jump over to Cura. So if we select the object, uh, we want to go to material, make sure that we have that set to 240, and then go up to infill, make sure that's set to 10. Uh, the infill pattern is not important here, using the default is fine. Alright, now that we have that done, let's go up to Extensions, uh, Post Processing, and Modify G-Code. Here, we'll go ahead and add a script and change at Z. 
uh, this 5.2.1 version. Uh, it's been experimental since I've been using Cura. I don't know if that's ever going to change or not. All right, so here is what I was talking about earlier. By default, the trigger is on height, and we've been doing uh, five millimeter in the previous video. And so basically in this example, you would go first step being five millimeter. We will take this down to 235. Next step would be uh, at 10 millimeters, we would go down to uh, 230, and then just repeating that pattern all the way till we get to uh, the 190. All right, so the issue we're facing here is um, for some reason, either a specific board or version of firmware isn't uh, working with the trigger at height uh, when it's sliced using Cura 4.8. I've had probably at least a dozen people report this to me, if not more. And I was going back and forth with one of our subscribers, uh, and he said he was able to get it to work if you switch the trigger from height to layer number. Uh, so there's a couple more things we have to do when we're considering that. So let's go ahead and uh, start at the top. I'm going to remove this one, and then we'll kind of talk about what needs to be done. Now, I'm hoping that this does get resolved at some point in time, hopefully sooner rather than later. But it's been an issue since uh, Cure 4.8's been out, and there's been enough people that have reported this to me as a problem that I wanted to at least get you guys working. That said, I'm running the uh, SKR Mini on my Ender 3, and the height trigger works just fine for me. So what's not clear is if it's related to the 32-bit boards that's been shipping with the Ender 3 V2 and some of the pros, or if it's a specific version of firmware, or if it's the firmware that's shipping on those boards. Um, I think everybody that's reported the issue to me was on the Creality 32-bit board. Uh, what I'm not sure about is if it goes beyond that, or if it's specific to the version of firmware that came with that board. All right, so if we switch over to layer number, all right, so using layers instead of height means you have to do a little bit more math. Right now we're using a layer height of 0.2 millimeter. Uh, so let me just close out of this really quick to show you. So here, 0.2 millimeters. So that means five layers is gonna be a millimeter. So that means we're gonna need 25 layers to get to that five millimeter of height. So what we're gonna have to do is modify G-code again, uh, go to layer number. So then at layer 25, we're going to go down to um, 235 degrees. Then we'll add another one. So then this is gonna be another 25 layers. So be layer 50. We're gonna go down to uh, 230. And then we'll just continue that process till we get to 190. So I'm gonna speed this up really quick. All right, so now that we got all that in place, let's just go and verify everything. Just make sure that the numbers look right. Um, I wanted to make a note that you do have to make sure you change the trigger on every uh, item that you enter, because uh, by default, when you add the new one, it's gonna go back to height. All right, that looks good. Now we'll go ahead and slice this, and then we can save it to file, put it on the SD card, and then start a print. Like I mentioned initially, typically I'll only use layers if I absolutely have to. Um, in this case, this is for the people that are having issues uh, with the temperature not changing when you're using the height. Uh, so this is the workaround. If this ever gets resolved, uh, I will let you guys know. I'll make an update to the description of this video and the original temperature tower video that I did saying that it was resolved and what version it was resolved in if it's a uh, change on the Cura side. Um, with there being so many variables now, like I mentioned earlier, it's hard to say exactly what is causing the issue. I'm not sure if it's something on the board or firmware side or for something on the Cura side, but it didn't start actually presenting itself until Cura 4.8 came out.
So hopefully, uh, for those of you who ran into the issue with the temperature not changing, this will get you guys moving on so you can get your temperature towers set up. If you have any questions on the process, go ahead and leave a comment below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. All right, guys. So that's the process to create a temperature tower using layers instead of height. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, I would really only do this if I'm having issues with the height. There seems to be some um, mainboard or firmware version that doesn't like the way that Cura 4A is handling the uh, temperature tower using the height. Uh, so the workaround was to use layers like we just talked about. Uh, typically, I wouldn't do this unless I had to or there was a specific reason. But if you have any questions or would like to give any feedback, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.